Hey, how are you? I'm Slice of Otaku, and I cannot wait to see Stevani again when Steve Universe Future comes our way. And that's because with a two year long time skip, growth is certainly to be expected. And throughout the narrative thus far, Stevani has very much been used as a symbol of growth and change. With their first appearance in the episode alone together, they are ecstatic. Their existence is strange if not unique and special, as even amongst fusions, they're a sort of incomprehensible state of being. One that even Pearl, albeit fascinated, immediately perceived as potentially inappropriate. And had they adhered to her uninformed sentiments towards normality, they would have never been able to find happiness and acceptance within themselves. And although fusions are commonly revered for their incredible combative capabilities, when they first come into existence, they are incredibly vulnerable. For fusions such as Garnet or Stevani, who'd initially conjoined without the desire for combat, those early moments mean so much. Gems upon creation instinctively know of their intended purpose the moment they emerge. Mixed gem fusions, however, being one of a kind combinations are wayward by default unless decided otherwise prior to their being. Garnet was told not to question herself and live by that very sentiment for thousands of years, which effectively made her purpose being informed and having all the right answers, which is precisely why in the past we have seen her crumble to uncertainty and indiscretion on so many occasions. And by being accepted so early on, she was able to impart that very same acceptance onto another in the form of Stevani, urging them to disassociate themselves from the confines of restrictive words and standards and instead just be and experience. And they really do and it's really heartwarming to see. But of course, uniqueness can at times be overwhelming and lead to alienation as when feelings of doubt begin to creep in, before you know it, different may become wrong. And in fighting through it, they're able to recognize that it's just as frustrating as it is confusing. But by being themselves and disregarding the judgment of others, they at the end of the day, manage to have a good time. Now with the episode Beach City Drift, they were very aggressive and overall not themselves as the desire to prove themselves to people that don't deserve it overtook them. They stopped living in the moment and having fun just for them, all for the sake of proving someone wrong and ultimately it wasn't worth it. Because by sacrificing their own fun, they failed to enjoy the experience of being behind the wheel and with that their reality began to crash in on them and they just couldn't sustain themselves. So instead of being led by their hatred, they decided to love themselves and live on their own terms. Which was really cool to see and stood to be a major point of growth for them. Their appearance in Crack the Whip, although brief, was really important because it was our first time seeing them fight and it was pretty remarkable. I mean, the episode as a whole stood to display the exponential growth of Steven and Connie individually so seeing them fuse together and be that effective was just amazing. Now, Mindful Education is an episode I doubt I really need to break down in terms of relevancy to their character, but yeah, meditation was really good for them. And with their constant hallucinations, this fusion really brings something new to the table, making it always really exciting to see what the crew will do with them next because whenever their emotions run too high, it's apparent and you really feel it. And I'm expecting plenty more of that to come with future. But yeah, this was an episode of such emotional vulnerability continuously revolving around guilt. And on that note, we've very much seen how strong negative emotions can weigh down Stefani, which leads me to believe that strong positive emotions would do the inverse and open us up to plenty of wonderful possibilities. Now, Jungle Moon was another really cool one, especially in terms of intersex representation. Because quite honestly, when I first started watching this show, and even when I was somewhat new to making videos, it was a bit difficult for me to shake the preconceived female connotation. Because frankly, Stevani is a very effeminate looking design. And in a series where the overwhelming majority of characters may be referred to with female pronouns, it's understandable why someone might make the mistake. 
Jungle Moon was the first time we'd really gotten to see something generally expected of a masculine portrayal. Which isn't to say females are exempt from body hair, but in terms of media, it's a bit of a rare sight. And so although this representation was for the most part brief, it served to add a level of depth and potential relatability to their character that wasn't there previously. Something else this episode provided us with was the simultaneous enhancement and modification of Steven's gem powers, specifically his dream-related ones, as Stevani played quite the vivid role in their reenactment of the past. Steven certainly done similarly by his lonesome, but never for such a long time. Not only that, but it's quite clear that Connie's human perception led to the distortion of this depiction, providing us with the rather unlikely parallel of Dr. Maheshwaran and Yellow Diamond. And so, although I can't imagine what circumstances would lead to them being asleep while fused in the upcoming episodes, I'll certainly entertain the thought on account of my burning curiosity. But finally, we have the episode Together Alone which once again smacks on that relatability button for a lot of people as their culturally conservative extended family very much demonizes their existence for being different. Now, this isn't something Savani is necessarily made to face, but they are made to be the face of this cultural conundrum because once again, their existence goes beyond the possible confusion of mixed gem fusion, as Steven's existence is already beyond explanation. So for him to come together with a life form belonging to an entirely different species, one believed to be fundamentally inferior in every way to the point of being compared to livestock, is incomprehensible, immoral, and all around wrong in their eyes, which really just makes Devani out to be the perfect symbol for change, the future, and this new era of gem kind. But at the same time, that depiction may be changing a bit. We were given a look at the current dynamic between Steven and Connie, and it's certainly one of romantic tension, let's say. They're just at that age, and so I'm really curious to see how that might impact Savani and their existence as one. Maybe we'll now see some sort of romantic connotation to their fusion, either making things a bit weird or just strengthening their connection all the more. But whatever the case, I'm fully expecting this situation to make the fandom lose its head when this default ship takes the world by storm. Now, unfortunately, I'm not really anticipating much development from them in the Department of Gem Abilities simply due to Steven's lack of combative engagements over the course of the two-year time skip. However, when it comes to Connie and her swordsmanship training, it's a way of life that she's now devoted to. And when it comes to mastery, especially in the case of a martial art, putting that time in really makes a difference, and with her sword now being far more proportionate to her size, I'm expecting her to be even more proficient. And by the way, based on the time that's passed, Stevani would now be 31. <laughs> yeah, that will be cool. Seeing the aged up versions of Steven's fusions will definitely be a treat, but I think Stevani is about to be the main course. And at that, Stevani is a character that I've only continued to love more and more as the series has progressed because as someone who hadn't really been exposed to concepts such as being non-binary or intersex prior to their viewership, their portrayal really sparked my own inquisition. And like I said previously, in the past, I'd slip up when it came to pronouns a whole lot, not from a place of malice, but rather one of simple ignorance. But as someone who's always willing to learn and understand others, it's something I feel I've greatly improved upon which is by no means to say that I'd ever consider myself infallible in such a space, but I will say that the desire to learn, improve, and adjust really goes a long way when it comes to respect. And at the end of the day, Stevani is a fictional character, but in knowing just how many people resonate with their depiction, I feel like it's worth respecting. And I really appreciate you guys for checking out this video and making it this far in. For those of you who make it to the very end each and every time to hear those last three words, I really can't thank you enough for the incredible support you've continuously shown me. If there's any other character you'd like me to take my time and discuss in a video like this leading up to Steve Universe's future, let me know in the comments so we can make things happen. 
And if you really enjoyed this one, I always appreciate seeing as much down below and on social media. But with that, thank you all so much for watching and have an awesome day. I love you.